Ooh, yeah, war machine is good for absolutely something, something, so good. Melody, what are you doing in this movie? What? Can't be in this movie? Is it because I'm black? No, it's it's because you're not red, white, and blue. Uh, we never saw the War Machine armor in Iron Man 3. Of course I'm in Iron Man 3. Like, this armor is in there just because I'm not red, white, and blue. I'm in the prequel comic, didn't you read it? Pfft, reading a comic before a comic book movie? Who does that? Want more figures to die cast for? Get your Hot Toys figures at BigBadToyStore.com. Link is in the description. Oh, man, kids. It's time for you. What up, big kids? Here's your big review of the Iron Man 3 Hot Toys War Machine Mark II Diecast Movie Masterpiece 1 6 scale collectible figure. So, here we got the unique packaging. This is kind of a mixture of the 1 4 scale slash 1 6 scale packaging uh, because this is a diecast figure. It's a lot heavier. It has this plastic uh, thing to cover it. I don't know, but it gives this kind of like 3D thing, like with the outline. It's kind of like an artist like drew this over, like, it's really cool. I don't know. It's like, like, it's really cool. It has the Sideshow exclusive sticker since it's the Sideshow exclusive. It says the MMS198D03. I'm guessing that's for diecast, even though this is the first one released. This is the third diecast figure. I think the Mark 42 and Iron Patriot is supposed to come out first. It says War Machine Mark 2, 1 6 scale collectible figure. Diecast! Uh, movie Masterpiece Hot Toys. One side of the box is gray, says War Machine Mark 2 on it. The other side continues that same picture, also says War Machine Mark 2. Top of the box has the War Machine. Mark II. Back here has all the credits and cast and crew of all the people who made this awesome figure. It also has a warning label. Warning, do not use this figure as a weapon. You will kill someone if you beat them over the head with this. You first open up this way and you want to take this big foam insert out of the bottom part. It says war machine in this big foam uh, casing. If you had the Hot Toys Hulk, Ironmonger, or any of the 1-4 scale figures, you know that Hot Toys ha uses this uh, very foam casing, but it has this plastic tray. And then when you remove this fo foam casing, there you can see the beautiful War Machine diecast figure in its casing. And you can see the Saito exclusive uh, hologram War Machine Mark 1 in the little side piece right there. Well, let's see if this figure is to die cast for. Here we got the Iron Man 3 Hot Toys War Machine Mark 2 die cast movie masterpiece 1 6 scale figure. This figure is definitely to die cast for. Holy crap, it's amazing. Let's take a closer look at it. Now, Hot Toys has went above and beyond to give us an exceptional figure. This is their first um, diecast figure release, even though this was the third one announced. And one thing I love about this figure, uh, even though it has a lot of diecast, it's not completely diecast. I'm very happy about that. I really love the head sculpt on here. The color scheme of the silver and grays just looks beautiful. I love the red paint outlining his eyes to give it that war machine look. I really love it. And the shoulder cannon, which I love, is pretty freaking awesome. There's so many cool little details. I'll get into the articulation, like you can see the little warning labels all around there. You can even see the danger uh, sticker on the uh, shoulder cannon. It's so freaking cool, the little details right there, just like the original one, which I'll compare this to. But yeah, this armor is freaking amazing. I love like Lieutenant James Colonel Rhodes. By the way, because this is um, a lot of the die casting there, it's really heavy. <laughs> Not super heavy, but definitely heavy compared to other uh, Iron Man figures. I love the FFAF right there. I love the red outline for his arc reactor. Armor looks amazing. I really like it a lot. Like I said, even though I do prefer the Mark I um, War Machine, oh, I love that says Danger right there. And, you know, he has like the stars right there on both his sides. I really love the ab work. Yeah, I really just the sculpting on here is amazing. And one thing you notice, oh, by the way, yeah, a disengage uh, to service, I like that. Um, one thing that's cool, and I'll show you when the lineup effects, you don't see really anywhere the batteries, except for the back of the arms. This so you can see where the batteries there, but mostly they cover up. Oh, you have ammo right there on the sides. Also, you can see the star on his uh, left forearm. Exceptional, like just the pain. And like I said, I'll point out what's diecast here in a moment, but yeah, like the feed right here. At least the good thing, since it's not completely diecast, I can actually, you know show the, this figure off without like it being super heavy on me. But thanks to uh, blogger OMG, uh, we know how much die cast and which parts are die cast. In the front, it's 
uh, no, no die cast on the head, but I don't mind at all. It's mostly the chest part right here, uh, the bottom part of the shoulder uh, pads, um, uh, the, the top part of his abs, um, his metal joints in his elbows, and the, a lot of the die cast right here in his ankles and metal um, ankle joints. Top part of his back is die cast, the middle part of the back, the back of his abs, the back of his thighs, and the back of his ankles. Side by side, the War Machine Mark II versus the War Machine Mark I. Uh, Mark II is a little bit slimmer, it doesn't have as many like shoulder cannons or like the minigun slash uh, missile pod. Uh, it's definitely a lot slimmer and has more silver. Now for articulation, this guy is really nicely articulated, especially more than the original War Machine. Now his head can go up almost like in fly pose, not as much as say the Mark VII. It can look down really good and can um, fully, well it, you have to be careful with the shoulder can, but it can fully rotate and look up and has a nice head pivot right there. Now, um, let's see the shoulder cannon first before I do the arms. The shoulder cannon is super articulated and you can put it in five points. So you see in the back here, you have one, two, three, four, five points so you can put it back here. It doesn't slide, it looks like it can, but it doesn't. But you can put it back here or in the middle. So you can put it left or right, whichever you desire. And this shoulder cannon itself can rotate at this point right here. It also um, rotates at this joint right there. And then this joint right here, can um, pivot forward and back, and this can also uh, move left and right. And then at this point right here, it um, also uh, can fully rotate. So it rotates and pivots at many different points. Now the shoulder pad, move them up and, and everything. Um, it's on kind of like a, that ball joint thing. Now the arms, when it's not um, moved up here, oops, sorry, um, it can go in and out that much. But here's the thing, uh, it says in instructions, if you actually move it down this much, you can uh, move it up higher and you can actually rotate the arm 360. So you have to move it down and Hot Toys made a video showing this where you move it down first before you rotate it. And it can also rotate at the bicep. And now what's cool at the uh, first time in an Iron Man figure, double joint elbows almost pretty much, you have to pull it down here, then you can bend it at two points, so it's more more than like a 110 degree angle. So it's not fully, but because you know it's armor, it's not, it's gonna be a little bit bulkier. But of course he has wrist articulation, fully rotates, goes in and out. He has the finger articulation that we love with three points of finger articulation and two points uh, with the thumb. So you can make a fist or give him the bird or you know, make a repulsor blast. So I love that. His new ab crunch articulation, it goes forward and back that much, and that's just on this joint right here, and can go, you know, pivot forward and back. Now you can actually lift it up, where you can actually make him go back even more. It has like one, two, three points of out articulation. It goes forward and uh, pivot side to side, and you can almost like rotate this. I would be careful not to scratch it, but you can almost rotate it. And he has kind of like a waist joint right here. A thigh flaps that lift up at two points of articulation right here and you have this flap that lifts up here. So now instead of the leg only going up this high like usual, you can actually, uh, and it goes back that much, you can actually pull it out a little bit and now you can have the leg joint go up even higher. So you just have to kind of pull it a little bit, be careful, and you can actually make it go up where he's like lying down or sitting, whatever, and you can make it almost like where he's, yeah, like he's doing the splits, Oop. and it goes right back on there, right? You can see, and it rotates the upper part of the leg, he bends at two points at the knee, a nice metal knee joint, and what's great here, the ankles are on the metal joint so you can pull them down where you can have it nicely pivot back. Oh yeah, and the, uh, this back flap pivots forward and these uh, front flaps uh, are on little ball joints here. You can pivot it forward and he has the two articulation. Now one thing that's different from any Iron Man figure I've gotten before, um, the batteries were separate. I don't know if they did that just because it's die cast, they worried about leakage and stuff. So depending on how, when you decide to open this figure and put the batteries in, all the batteries come separate where you have to install them, but you get this nice little screwdriver 
where um, it even says Hot Toys right here, works really well. And you put in the three batteries and the back of the arms right here, um, the head, which I'll show right here. And what Hot Toys decided to do, instead of making the light up uh, part, like with the faceplate, I guess, because it's different, instead of making a removable faceplate or in the neck joint like they used to do, they made this top part right here where you actually remove it like that. And then this is where you see the, uh, the batteries are installed and then there's a switch right here which you turn it and then you can see the eyes light up really nicely, very nice and bright. They have this kind of whitish blue tint to them. You put this on here. It, um, it's not too hard to take this on and down but um, and so you don't see the switch anymore. At the upper back here you actually remove this part and you can see the switch and where the batteries you've installed right here. So you flip the switch right here, and there you can see a nice bright arc reactor light. It's a nice white light. Um, because of that red uh, uh, highlight right here, uh, it kind of looks like it, it's a little bit red, but it's really just a white light. And you just remove this part, uh, gauntlet armor. So you, this comes off right here, and you can see a switch right here, which you turn on, and you can see a nice, like, kind of whitish blue light. The left arm, it's a little different. You actually remove the top of the wrist armor. You see the light right here, which, um, you know, works really well. And one thing that, the reason they did that, because he actually comes with an interchangeable uh, wrist rocket armor that we saw him use in the movie, at least as Iron Patriot. And you can see here, it looks really good, really nice detail on there. It's just a little mini wrist rock, or it's not like a rocket, more as a gun, which is cool. But um, yeah, one thing I wish uh, I did have one for the right uh, arm too, it's only for the left. Now War Machine doesn't come with that many accessories. He does come with a detailed instruction manual on how to put in the batteries, how to do the articulation, besides that screwdriver and interchangeable wrist rocket for his left arm. Uh, he comes with uh, five other hands, uh, a set of repulsor blast hands, which are nicely detailed, a set of fist hands, uh, which are also very nice. And he has one hand that's meant to salute. This makes more sense for Iron Patriot, but I'm guessing because this is repaint, they had it here for him anyway. And he also comes with that little piece that is used to like remove little pieces. Now War Machine comes with this really nice display base. It says Iron Man 3 War Machine Marvel on there. It emulates the Hall of Armor bottom pieces, uh, which are very nice. I really like that silver paint that they use. They also use this really strong a metal um, cradle that is different from the other ones, like even the dynamic bases that we've gotten in, or the standard Hot Toys. It even says the instructions to not, because this is a die cast figure, to use anything but this uh, base for like any kind of flight poses or anything because it will break and you don't want to do that. It takes three AAA batteries, which has an on off switch right here. When you turn it on, it has this nice bright LED lights um, all around, which look really good, uh, looks super cool. Now, since I got this Sideshow exclusive, uh, what you get is this extra hologram uh, war machine based on the Mark I war, war machine. It's very nice and detailed. I really like it a lot, just a cool little piece for your workbench, Tony Stark, or whatever you want. If you saw my unboxing, the, the minigun broke and I had to super glue it. So be careful of that if you do have this, that this minigun has a tendency to break. I never realized that these could break like that until I had this one. So careful of that. But if you're able to get this, this is a cool little extra you can get only from Sideshow Collectibles. Hey Mandarin. Yes, old chap. How this War Machine celebrate Black History Month? With a six pack? With a bang. Oh bloody hell. I bet he never saw that coming. Size comparison time. So here you can see that the Mark II War Machine is in great scale with other Hot Toys figures. It's definitely taller than the normal Hot Toys figure like the mechanic Tony Stark. And you can see that compared to the Mark I War Machine, this is an amazing figure. I know that War Machine or this version of War Machine wasn't in the movie. But for the people that missed out on the first War Machine figure or even the Milk War Machine, People will be really happy not only that they'll get an amazing looking War Machine figure, but a, a really adult collectible figure with the die cast really adds a lot. It really not only literally weight to the figure, but really makes it feel like an amazing piece. The articulation is even more improved since the first War Machine figure and the light effects work really good. 
I do wish that they were a little easier to get to, but I know that Hot Toys was trying to do that to make it hot, to hide the switches, so I understand that. The Sideshow exclusive I got for $284.99, which it's sold out or you have to get on the waitlist. Link is in the description to get on the waitlist. It is available at Big Bad Toy Store right now uh, for the regular version. I know that could be a little pricey, but for what you're getting in terms of quality with the die cast and all the um, light up effects and the amazing articulation, I think it's well worth it. I like the fact that it's actually not completely die cast because this would be a way more expensive, way more heavier figure and the mixture of plastic and die cast really is absolutely exceptional. I highly recommend. Like I say, you can get this right now at Big Bad Toy Store or you can get on the waitlist for the exclusive at SideshowCollectibles.com. You can also win a Iron Man 3 Hot Toys The Mandarin figure right now from Sideshow uh, Collectibles and myself. Link in the description to enter. And check out uh, more at my website at SeanXLong.com and at HughesNerd.net. I'm Sean Long saying live long and love life. Check out Sean Long, Jason David Frank, Tommy the Green Ranger. <laughs> hey Tony, I stopped the Mandarin. You did? How'd you get him? With your shoulder cannon? Nope, I just sat on him. Oh bloody hell, I can't breathe. Whoa, that's heavy, Doc. By the way, old chap, can you do me a favor and hand me another beer and move your ass just a little to the right so I can watch the game? Ole, 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 ole.